Okay, number four. How do I find the strength of magnetic force acting on a current carrying wire? So we talked about in the notes last time that when there is a motion of a charged particle that creates a magnetic field, that magnetic field, when it interacts with another magnetic field, creates a force. So we need an equation for that. And here it is. F equals I L B. So F is force, nothing weird there. I is still current. B is still magnetic field. And L is the length of wire in the field. And I'll just write in B because B is magnetic field. So it's the length of wire in the magnetic field. There you go. That's it. I'm not even going to do an example problem because I am so confident in your ability to plug in simple numbers. Because that's it. It's just plug in the numbers, solve. That's it. Super easy. Okay? So how do I find the strength of the magnetic field on a moving electric charge? So what if it's not a current? What if it's one charge? Well, the equation was F equals ILB. But I is the rate at which charge flows. So I can rewrite this as Q over T times L over B. And length is really just a distance that the uh, charges travel. So I can rewrite this as Q over T times D times B. And oh my gosh, what's D over T? There we go. I had faith in you guys. So, Q, V, B. So put it all together. Here's the equation. Force equals Q, V, B. That's the equation. Okay, so F is force. Q is charge. V is the velocity of the charge. And B is magnetic field. And I know what you're saying to yourself. You're saying, Mr. B, this is super easy. I'm glad you're giving us this. E you're going to make us find direction, aren't you? You're right. I am going to make you find the direction. So. This is the easy part, solving it and plugging in, super easy. Here is the part that's not easy, finding the direction. So we're going to use the right-hand rule. And you're like, Mr. B, we just did the right-hand rule. It's super easy. How could this be? It's a different right-hand rule. It's called the right-hand rule. It's not, it's not the same right-hand rule. Okay, It's a different right-hand rule. So what you're going to do is on the last one, you got your thumb and then you like made a fist. Now you're going to get finger guns out. Okay, Here's how you do your finger gun. So you point in front of you, your thumb goes up to make like the hammer, pew, 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 and then your uh, middle finger points out to make the trigger. So you got like a little pew, 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 pew action going on, okay? So here's what each of the fingers represent. So your pointer finger represents the current or the charge's velocity. So it's the current slash velocity. direction. Okay, your middle finger is the B field direction, so the magnetic field direction, and your thumb is the force direction. I don't make you memorize very many things. This thing you're going to have to memorize. You have to know what each of the fingers are. Okay. Um, so in the meantime, while you're learning it, keep this handy so you can reference back what each finger is. Okay. 
So here's how you do it. Let's do an example. Let's do this example up here, um, but going through a field. So we have current going into the page. So I is into the page. I can. So I is into the page. And let's go ahead and make the field go to the right. So it's going through a magnetic field that's going to the right. So here's how we do it. We start by taking our bang bang shoot em finger and we put it into the page. Then we take our trigger finger, the field finger, and we point it to the right and my thumb is the direction of the force, and it's down. So F would be down. No, it's not too bad. If you remember what these things are, it's not too bad. Okay? Yes? Who came up with these rules? Who came up with these rules? Uh, math people, believe it or not. Not the first right-hand rule. This right-hand rule, it's called cross products. They're super nasty. They're a really complex calculus thing. Um, but the way you figure out the direction is that this is how you do it. It has to be perpendicular to two things, and that's how you make perpendicular to two things. Now, the one thing I'll say about the right-hand rule, um, one, just get used to looking kind of silly. Like, because you're going to be doing a problem, and you're going to be sitting here doing this. Just get used to it. Everyone's going to be, like, you're all going to be taking the test, and everyone's going to be sitting here doing this. Don't worry about it. Just get used to it. Um, also, I'm going to do my best. Like, be careful when you're doing it. I'm going to do my best to not make magnetic fields go up because you can kind of guess what that, yeah, what that would look like if you made the magnetic field up. So anyway, we'll try not to do magnetic fields up. We'll do magnetic fields in other directions, but not up. So I'll let you let you experiment with that one on your own. Um, anyway, any questions on fields, forces, any of those things? No up fields. Okay? Yep, no up fields. No, it's not too bad at all. So here's what I want.